I have to be quite frank with you. When it comes to lipos, I know nothing. I know nothing about charge rates, storage charge, recycling, whatever batteries, nothing, zilch. I don't even know how they're made or, or what causes one lipo to cost more than another. I don't even know what causes them to puff or swell or explode. But I do know who to ask and who might have the answer. Sit back, grab some popcorn, let's get into this. <laughs> All right, I got recording. I got my buddy Thomas on the phone. Yo, <laughs> uh, answer some questions about lipos. So uh, he's my answer guy. Uh, you know, just very in depth with electronic stuff. I'm just over my head, but uh, so man, it's easy. Come on now, you're not over your head. <laughs> So let's start off first, okay? Is there a lot, like, people think there's a lot of LiPo manufacturers out there. Like, they think there's a ton of motor manufacturers. Man, uh, again, there's only a few. Right. So so let's break this down into some different categories, right? Okay. You have the people who actually make the cells. Okay. And then you have people who kind of just slap a case on it and put their sticker on it. Mm -hmm. right right you have a lot of people who just uh put a case over them and put their sticker on it mm -hmm. versus the actual person who's making the sales right. so it's two different things if you look at it as the people who are actually making you know they're getting the uh you know the, the, the lithium and kind of layering it and you know soldering tabs on the actual cell yeah nah, it's not that many people doing that but however there's a ton of people kind of just buying sales and uh putting them in a hard case or shrink wrap and selling them okay so it's kind of a two-pronged answer there okay okay uh so my next question is uh are lipos created equal like what determines the price of a lipo battery or a cell like some batteries you go they buy you know are more expensive than the others yeah 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 uh so um man, that's that's, that's an interesting question it's kind of like a, i mean it comes down to, to battery chemistry um it, i mean it's a lot of different things i give an example of this like buying you know a you know an energizer or a duracell versus like uh you know the the royal with the cat on it right <laughs> <laughs> battery you know uh, uh -huh. um some of them are going to last longer. Some of them are built for performance. Uh, so it just depends, you know, if, you, if you're racing, you know, in depth. Then, man, I would go to one of the race companies and buy some from a race company uh, just because they may be specking out a different, you know, uh, the company they're working with. Mm -hmm. So with LiPo's, you can kind of go over and say, hey, man, this is what I'm looking for. It's just like motors. Mm -hmm. You come up with a spec. Hey, this is what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And they'll try to meet that, you know. Okay. I'm going to tell you, you know, I think uh, some years back, Orion put together a really good video about uh, how lipos are made. I thought it was, I thought it was, it was pretty, we wanted the most kind of informative videos just to kind of see the process done, you know? Right, right. I don't, you know, I only charge at 8 amps because I saw Mayfield charging the 8 amps. When he came to Speed RC, <laughs> he was charging the 8 amps, so that's what I went over to my little charging, all right, 8 amps, you know. Uh, oh, man. So he was copying it. He was looking hard, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was oh, watching. Goodness. I was watching. That's when he just won the worlds. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, hey, everybody's yeah. watching Mayfield. Oh man, yeah. Hey, you might want to copy everything there, right? <laughs> so, uh, so the question is: is uh, I don't know how to cycle batteries. Uh huh. So what's all entail in cycling batteries? Okay. So hold on. Let me. Uh, let me talk about charging batteries right okay so, okay and all of this stuff kind of goes together right okay. so um so one you know it depends so again you, you got to look at it from two standpoints if you're a budget racer mm -hmm. and I you want to make those batteries last as long as possible yeah you need to charge them 
how the manufacturer recommends, you know, if it's like 2C or, you know, something like that, and 1.5C, then that's what I would go with. I would charge what they say, and I would follow the directions they tell you. Okay. Um, uh, just because that'll make the battery last as long as possible. Right. Now, if you're racing, that's a totally different story, man. You're getting in the, you know, trying to warm the, you know, the chemistry up. So that you can get, you know, higher performance as it gets hot, the uh, resistance goes down so the battery can perform, you know, a lot stronger um, under loads. I mean, you can, you know, you can output a lot more power. So, um, so from the charging aspect, you know, again, if your budget stay with what the manufacturer says, um, don't overcharge and do not, you know, run your battery beyond the um the threshold uh because it will swell and mm -hmm. uh, lipos are notorious so if they go under charge mm -hmm. man that thing's gonna swell within a few minutes okay. uh, or even overcharge so uh, but anyway uh cycling is uh let's say if you have your battery in storage charge for a while mm -hmm. right in storage you don't race for a couple of months uh, maybe a couple of weekends mm -hmm. you probably want to cycle it so when i say cycle that mean charge and discharge so you want to charge it, then you want to discharge it. You want to do that two or three times to kind of get the chemistry working right again. Okay. Um, a, a, a best, the only like analogy I can give you for that is, uh, hey, have you ever purchased some like, uh, um, what is it? Some uh, salad dressing, mm -hmm. oil-based salad dressing right. in the store. And if you look at it initially, the oil is separated from the rest of the stuff in there. Mm -hmm. So when you get it, you got to kind of shake it back up to get it, you know, kind of uh, re-emulsified and everything, you know. Right. And then you can use it. It'll taste right, you know. But if you just pour it off the top, it's just oil, right? Right. So that's kind of what cycling is. So if, if it's just sat there for a while, the chemistry is kind of slowly separating, you know. Okay. And you need to kind of wake um, the process back up. So that's what you're doing with cycling. So, yeah, if you haven't raced in a while, it's always real good to cycle your batteries. Maybe two or three times before you start to race. You know, especially if you're going for, uh, I mean, high-end racing is super competitive. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's another question is, <clears throat> uh, you know, Team Exalt or some, one of the companies, I, I'll say it, Team Exalt came out for LiPo Warmer. Okay. Would that take the place of cycling the battery to get the chemistry warm? No. So, so oh, we're talking about two different things here now. Okay. So, <clears throat> cycling is for if you left your if your battery's been you know in storage mode for a while. Right. Take them out of storage mode, charge them up, discharge them, charge them up, discharge them. Mm -hmm. Do that a couple times, and then you're ready to race. Oh, do you need one of those discharge things? Uh, oh man, hey, look at here. I missed the light bulbs, man. Yeah. <laughs> so do you need one of them, uh, was it, discharge capacitor or whatever things? Oh, uh, man, yeah. So it, having, so like, because you don't want lipos to go under a specific voltage, uh -huh. then you definitely need something to monitor the discharge and turn it off Okay. when it reaches that critical voltage, right? And this is an extra piece beyond the charger. Yeah. Or, or could you do yeah. this? Well, no, no, no. Guess what? You, most chargers, if you get a high-end charger, mo most chargers can do a discharge. Or mo Actually, even a low-end charger could do a discharge. Okay, so that's Not all you need. If you do a rapid discharge, it might be able to discharge at, uh, you know, maybe one or two amps or something like that, an hour mm -hmm. or uh, something along, the, along that line. You know, it won't be able to do it fast, but it'll be able to discharge. Um, but now, it, again... If you're doing competition racing, then you probably want to get something outside or maybe get you a, um, you know, like a, uh, a eye charger or, you know, is a Hyperion, you know, one of those chargers mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, do, you know, for battery maintenance, like charge, discharge and all that stuff. Um, you know, man, it, you know, this kind of takes me back to my uh, Turbo 35 days, you know. <laughs> so, crazy. so, uh, <laughs> so for like, so competition you want to get one of the little extensions because the discharge thing in the discharge mode in a charger 
probably isn't discharging fast enough or well no so uh, again it depends on what kind of charge if you get a high end, so let's say if you're racing competition right right then you want to get you know something that can discharge at a high a high rate okay because you want to warm the battery chemistry up right okay um so now the product you was talking about from exalt the battery warmer mm -hmm. um what they're trying to do let's say if you, you already been racing the weekend you already you know put down a couple passes and you're you're in the, like second cycle of your battery right you you use these things to keep the chemistry in your battery warm okay because if the battery is warm the resistance is lower so the battery can perform better okay you know right kind of an inverse situation so if the battery is hot Resistance is low. I mean, the battery pack is going to be pretty fast. Okay. It's going to be able to to dump out energy uh, really easy. Bring it back to charger. So, <laughs> in competition, would it be worth it to get a high end charger, or you'd be fine with a low end charger? Uh man, uh, hey, or is that all preference? If, if your if your pocket can stand it, I would get a high end charger. Okay. <laughs> if your pockets your pockets shrivel up <laughs> hey, hey, hey guess what man man i'm gonna tell you i can't you know uh hey i can't you know back when i first started racing man hey it was everything second hand you know yeah yep the well, old chicken was it 112 yeah <laughs> the on the top. So, or or you could be uh you could be uh uh, episode of Don't Be That Guy. You can walk around and see who got an eye charger. Say, hey, can I get a charge? <laughs> hey, guess what, hey? Man. <laughs> can I get hey, a charge? You, you can definitely, hey, man, can I get a charge? Hey, help me up, man. <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, uh, I mean, that's the thing, you know, uh, the, you know, that'll help a lot of the younger guys, the newer guys kind of understand this stuff, you know, help them out. Right. You know, uh, hey, give them a quick boost. You know, don't, don't don't charge it. Don't don't blow his battery up. Don't charge it at forty amps and right. just totally wreck his pack. But right. you know, uh, you know, give him a boosted charge and uh, see what he thinks. See if he can feel a difference. I mean, let's be honest though. I'm gonna tell you that all of that stuff is good. But all these things we're talking about right now, Jason, is for like, um, you know, the people who've kind of mastered staying on the track. Right, man. If you that guy that's going, you know, just plow into the you know, the turn one on the very, you know, once the announcer call your name, you just plow right in right. to the wall. Right. Then you should not be thinking about this kind of stuff. You should be you thinking about lipos. You yeah. should be thinking about chargers. You, should, you get... shouldn't be thinking about any of this stuff. You should be thinking about, hey, man, just hey, stay in the middle of the track. Stay in the middle of the track. Yep. Once you can understand, hey, you're getting a lot of consistent laps down without wrecking or having the marshal come to marshal you. Then you can get fast, you know. Yeah. Then you need to start looking at those things. Because uh, all of these things you're talking about just give you an edge. Right. You know? When you can stay on the track without crashing. When you can stay on the track, you know? When you can stay on the track, when you know tire maintenance, when you can understand when your tires are wearing out or when your tires becoming inconsistent, mm -hmm. when you can, uh, you know, when you start understanding, hey, I don't need to upset the car and, and servo speeds and things like that, mm -hmm. man... After you understand all of that kind of stuff, then you can start to look at your battery performance. There's, you know, I know some racers charge at 40 amps. Oh, yeah. And discharge, I think, I want to say discharge at 40 or something like that or something. Yeah, man, I'm going to tell you. So, um, that's all competition stuff, man. Yeah. You are drastically um, destroying the life of the pack. Yeah. How long does yeah. the pack last doing that? Like a race weekend or, or every couple? Uh, you might get, you might get, let's say you might get about four or five, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't, I, 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 specifically, I don't charge my packs that high. Right, right. Um, but again, I, I mean, that's hard to say. Yeah. Just because some of the quality of some packs are better right. than others, you know. Um, so... What I can tell you is that, you know, I would say, uh, you know, the higher you go, mm -hmm. the life expectancy goes way down. It's like almost, you know, I mean, it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one thing. It's more like an exponential kind of thing. The higher you charge, right. the 
less battery life you're going to have. Like I said, you know, I saw Mayfield, he, he just won the Worlds. He came to speed for the, the J concept. He was charging at eight. and. Well, so like, but see, let me tell you something different though. Uh, uh, when you run in modified, mod, modified racing, uh, mod for mod racing, you don't need the, uh, you know, you don't have to do all of the stuff that we're talking about right now. Right. So, because uh, modified, you got enough motor to do that. This stuff is for more like stock racing. Seventeen five. When you're stock racing, yeah. So, like, warming the battery chemistry up in mod racing is not going to help you. Right. You know, however, for stock racing, man, it's important. When you get to that level, right? You know, when you get to that level where, um, you know, you're competing with those guys. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, uh, that's just gonna give you an edge, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's not. I mean, if, dude, if you're in the pipe once, just look at some of the stock races. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, if you get in the pipe once, or even if you are out of shape coming off a jump, or you know, uh, you know, coming out of turn, mm -hmm. I mean, it might be over. Yeah, you know. Bottles. So, yeah, so I would say that now, nah, man, this stuff that you're talking about is mainly is more for stock racing, um, for um, modified racing. You don't, I don't think you necessarily need all of that. It's right. not going to give you that much of a, you know, competitive edge. You know. So, moving on, what causes a lipo to puff up? Oh man, that's easy though. Like if yeah, so overcharging and if. Uh, if a cell drops below its, uh, I'm gonna say critical voltage, then it's gonna swell. Do they have the critical voltage on the on the battery pack? Or? Yeah. So, like for example, uh, let me see here. Oh uh, goodness. So you will see some. So let's say one lithium cell is about three point seven volts. You're right. Um, and I think you could probably charge <laughs> it up to maybe four point one volts, mm -hmm. but anything after that. I think maybe 3.7-ish, mm -hmm. um, you run the possibility of get, you know, swelling it or something like that along those lines. All but right. again, hey, don't, don't quote me on this because I haven't looked at this in a really long time. But, right. uh, you know, uh, but yeah, so again, it should 100% say on the pack, hey, don't discharge uh, below X voltage. And you know what? That's why it has like the cutoff on your speed controls. Okay. All right, so you're out there driving so it doesn't go below, the back light pole doesn't go below that volt? Yep. So, I mean, it, dude, if you're under a heavy load and, and it starts to dip below that voltage, then uh, the, the the chemistry is going to start breaking down in your battery. Okay. And, uh, man, it's it's going to be pretty ugly then. All right. That, if you keep going, uh, yeah, fire. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> breaks my next, that, that, uh, that breaks my next question is what caused them to explode? Oh, same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when you know lithium reacts really violent when it uh, comes in contact with water, mm -hmm. so I think when it dips below the um, let's say that critical voltage, mm -hmm. uh, you begin to develop um, maybe some I don't want to say water molecule, it's something the gas that is developing um, interacts with something, maybe the aluminum. Right. And it starts to create some type of a water-like molecule. Okay. Um, and that's how it blows. It, it destroys itself. But again, um, man, I haven't looked at this chemistry stuff. And I, and I learned this a long time ago. But right. <laughs> right. don't quote me. So everybody who hears this video, <laughs> hey, I'm uh, I'm knowledgeable, but I'm not the expert on lithium polymer. Right, right. <laughs> All right, last question is, how do you storage charge them? Oh, uh, man, storage charge, uh, you should have a function on your uh, charger that says storage charge. It says storage mode. Right. Pretty much it's just going to charge it up halfway. Okay. And kind of, uh, you know, charge it up halfway. And, and what that does is, have you ever seen, you know, like, you try to go and charge a lithium battery and it says, hey, you get an error. Mm -hmm. That's because your voltage has dropped too low. And the thing is saying, hey, man, hey, the voltage has dropped too low. This thing could explode. It could do anything. I don't know. I'm not charging it, right? Right. Um, well, I've so, had my charger do that. Yep. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and a way to get around that is this is, you know, uh, you know, hey, try this at your own risk. But you could put it in nickel metal mode uh, for maybe uh, five minutes or so um, so that the voltage 
um, you know, starts to climb back up yeah. and once it gets over that, you know, let's say it gets to seven volts, then you could probably plug it back in and it should charge just at, fine. At your own risk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's at your own risk. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, so... No, yeah, the storage is just kind of you charging it so you can store it, and it has half energy, so the chemistry is still working. The chemistry is still there. It still understands. You don't want to charge it at a, you know, you don't want to store it at a full because, again, that starts to break down the chemistry. It's going to kill the life of your battery just to store it at a full charge. Okay. You know, so storing it at enough uh, energy where it kind of understands its purpose and still know what it's supposed to do. Um, you don't want to store it low enough where just sitting on a shelf, the um, it's going to drop below voltage, and then you're going to have an issue with charging it. Mm. You know, so just right in the middle should be fine. Uh, well, that's what the chargers do. How long storage charge lasts? Us? If you storage charge a battery, how long is that storage? How long can you put a battery? You know, pretty much like not use. I don't know, man. That's that's a very good question. I mean, okay. uh, I think lithium polymer could probably you could probably you know pull it off the shelf in a year and it may be fine. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. As long as it's in that storage charge mode. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I will tell you. Uh, I had some lithiums that I used, and I think around. This is when they first came out. They were some Protec cells. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I used them in maybe two thousand nine ish. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped racing for a few years, and I uh, those was the first batteries. I mean, I still had them. So I charged them up, and uh, then I didn't have storage charge, so I had to charge them in nickel metal mode. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but, man, they worked. I was surprised that they worked, right. you know? So, I mean, those batteries were several years old. It was the old Protec. When they first came out, they used to have, like, the red, like, heat shrink around them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, But, yeah, man, those were some awesome sales, you know? Okay. So that storage charge kind of lasted that, that long, but you had to. Well, I don't. I, I don't want to say those were in storage charge. I want to say that man, it was just some some really good batteries, you know. Right, quality. Yeah, but if you did like a storage charge, yeah, man, you should probably be able to pick them up within a year or so and keep using them. Racing at speed, man. The club racing with speed was it was top notch, uh, ridiculous. <laughs> I saw people rifling through batteries, man. They were man. like shotgun shells. Man, I'm going to tell you, uh, man, no speed days. I mean, I was just, man, just the level of competition we had there was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, people getting faster. Yeah, guys sharing information. People were trying, you know, weird off-the-wall stuff. Yeah, I mean, it was just a really good place for, mm -hmm. you know, racing. They kept a bucket of sand around, every, well, at the end of every pit table. Just in oh, yeah. case, uh, batteries yeah, start smoking. <laughs> Just in case a lipo, man, there's plenty of lipos that went up in there. So, <laughs> uh, so what if if somebody's lipo starts smoking? What what would you suggest them do? I mean, I, I've I've seen the sand, the bucket of sand where they you know stick them in the well, sand. Man, I'm gonna tell you, you know what? That's why it asks that for everyone to charge their batteries in a fireproof. Bait, right. or a lipo proof bag right. or a battery bag you know right just because if it does swell or catch on fire the bag is going to you know you know uh absorb well i don't want to say absorb the fire but it's going to protect everything around it and under it so that the fire doesn't spread right you know right so i mean that's why it's really important to charge in a especially if you're charging at 40 amps or something like that you definitely put it in you know uh ammo can or uh, you know something that's not going to allow the fire to escape yeah you know? yeah uh that's one thing i store i store my batteries in a ammunition case yep and i put sandbags over my batteries oh man are you ready for the explosion so if it does if it does catch it's in that and it's got sand uh there yep. to, to suffocate it you know yeah that's what that's what you need uh, that's how, that's, it, cause I keep my batteries in my house. So yeah. uh, I know, you know, some people, they were like, you know, don't bring them in your house. Some people keep them outside. Some people keep them in their garage. I don't have a garage, you know? Yeah, I keep, I'm out in the garage right now. I keep mine out in the garage. It's kind of, uh, 
let me see here what I have on a so right now I have some of the what are those? <laughs> it was ace. Yep. Red line. Let me see what these are here. I believe I haven't opened them yet. They still in the box? They still a brand new still in the box. <laughs> <laughs> yep, man. <laughs> so uh yeah, they're the Jens H red line and these are let me see here what size are they? These are the fifty one hundreds. Okay. Yep. Uh, seven point six volt, one hundred and thirty C, five millimeter bullets. Yeah, so man, it gives you this huge. Uh, I don't say huge. It's probably like a full page and a half reading. Right. For the do's and don'ts, right. you know. Yeah, never discharge the battery below three three volts per cell. Okay. So that's six volts total. It go below below six volts, man. You gonna have some trouble. Okay. You know. That is the batteries I use. Uh, is Gen Ace. Oh, yes. Yeah. It makes them, they, they got some really good batteries. Uh, so I like these batteries and I like the Protec batteries. I race, uh, I race mods, so, I, you know, I don't need like high end batteries. So I always run the Gen Ace. The price is good. Price is in my budget, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but budget is important. But, you know, I have heard through the grapevine, like, some of the best batteries out there is Protec. And yeah, well, again, I can believe that I can go with that. And to be the testament of that is you had Ty Testman running them, you had Mayfield running them, and you got Spencer Rifkin running them. Wow, yeah, well, hey, man, all those world champions in there, hey. <laughs> yeah, and uh, they were if more and roar approved batteries, so they didn't have when they go to races. That's another reason I think they ran them. Is when they go to races, they ain't got to worry about is their stuff if more roar approved. So I wonder, I haven't held one to warmers. I hadn't seen one to warmers, but I wonder if it's in the, if it keeps it warm in the specs. So when you go through tech, it's warm, but it ain't over. Well, I mean, I got you. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a good question. I have no idea. I haven't dealt with one yet. Yeah. Um, but it'll be good to see that. It'll be good to try one. Yeah. See how it works. If it, you know how, how well does it work? You know, actually, uh, somebody should probably put together that data. Yeah. See how well your batteries work if it's hot. What's the optimum degrees to keep it for stock racing? But again, still, you know, all that all that plays into your your life of your battery. Yeah. You know, um, so like, let's say if you get you know some of these. Uh, Lithium batteries say, hey, yeah, you can get, you know, 500 cycles right out of the battery. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let, let's say if you kill that by, you know, you know, 50 percent, you know, still 250 charges or, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty that's really good, actually. You know, right. I mean, you probably can get a, a, a maybe about a good season out of it, uh, you know. If you have just one pack, or, or I don't know how many packs you need, you could probably get about one good season, maybe one, you know? Right. And and, and then you just speculate, you know, how much damage. I have no earthly idea. I need to, you know, run an experiment to see, you know, the degradation of charging your battery at 40 amps. But, right. So, I mean, I don't know, you know? Right. I'm sure somebody, you know, when you post a video, just say, hey, somebody tell me. Leave it in the comments. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hey, what's the what's the expectancy? Uh, you know, charging your you know your lipo at forty amps, or in, in discharging or cycling it at these high current rates to you know warm up the chemistry. Right. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> well, T, I won't hold you up, man. Thank you, thank you so much, man. Oh, hey, no, hey, no problem, man. Hey, uh, you know, uh, not it, man, any questions you got? Uh, you know, I try to help you, uh, you know, as, as much as I can, and. Uh, talk about these things and yeah. uh, again i'm not the absolute expert there's some guys who who know this stuff like you know how thick the polymer layer needs to be <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so, no nah, that's uh that's that's definitely not me i just know some of the basics so yeah. all right yeah well t man i'll let you go thank you so much man all right man you have a good one you too if you liked the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. It'd be doing me a tremendous favor. Uh, you know, just helping out the channel, help the channel grow. 
In the video, I mean, we talked about, you know, discharge, storage charge, and, and cycling batteries, but if y'all know more about LiPos, comment down below. I mean, it'd be helping out the community, be helping out me uh, learn more. Uh, like I said, stuff that we talked about tonight, I didn't know. So if y'all have more info, feel free to share down below. If you want to know more how LiPos are made and how I store my LiPo in the house or, or how I keep my LiPos, you know, in the container, I have two links down below. The first link is to the Team Orion video they done like 15 years ago where they go into a factory and they show the whole start and end process of how a LiPo goes from chemical to, you know, a polymer and then how the LiPo is put together. And the other link will be a video to my LiPo box of showing you how I made my LiPo box. And don't forget to check out my merch down below. I changed my logo up. Uh, just a cleaner new look of a, a logo. Uh, check it out down below. I have coffee cups, shirts, uh, sweaters, hoodies. I uh, don't have stickers yet. Uh, I got to get with touch with Jacob to get that. But uh, just uh, check them out down below. And as usual, uh, I do everything 100% sponsored. So that'd be super helpful to, to the channel. Um, but as usual, if you see me at the track, come up to me, say what's up. I'm just like everybody else. See you soon.